The last recorded words of Jesus, as in the Gospel of Matthew, are when he is commanding his disciples to go and make other disciples. Now, as a follower of Jesus, have you ever been a little bit challenged by that command? Well, if so, join us and let's dig into a short study and we're going to find some answers. Okay, so we're going to suggest that you download our free discovery study off our website. The details will be below. Uh, print it off, get some colour pencils, sit down with a cup of coffee and follow us as we go through this very well-known passage. Uh, dig into it and see what we can learn for ourselves. Um, the study itself is called As You Go, Make Disciples on Matthew 28 verses 16 to 20. So you may want to pause the video, go and do that, settle down and then uh, join us uh, now as we go through this. So. If you have the sheet in front of you laid out with the text uh, for Matthew 28 on the top left hand corner and you've got the first things first below, I'm going to read that through, have a little discussion before we then go through the observe uh, questions on the right hand side. So, first things first, can you remember when you first heard about Jesus? Was it through a relative, a friend, or a work colleague, or during a school lesson, or perhaps a stranger even speaking to you in the street? And I wonder what it was that first impacted you about what you heard about Jesus. Um, what would you say to that? Yeah, well, I was very fortunate that I was brought up in a Christian home. So we went to Sunday school and learnt about him. But it wasn't until I was 14 when I was really challenged in a service uh, that Jesus had uh, died for me to take away my sins. I know there was a call for me to repent and to give my life to him and to make him Lord of my life. So. I, I responded, I think I'd say I was really 14 before I really felt impacted by that name, Jesus. Yeah, and for me, it was during confirmation classes, again, similar age to you, um, and uh, going away with our school chaplain and other people and discussing who Jesus was and uh, started that journey of discovery. Mm. So you may want to pause the video at this stage and just have that little discussion uh, with yourselves uh, to answer that uh, initial question. All right, so in the passage above from the book of Matthew in the Bible, Jesus is talking with his close friends, his disciples, after he's risen from the dead. Let's find out what he is saying to them and see if it has any relevance for us today and also how we should respond. Mm -hmm. So on the top right-hand side, we've got a number one under observed there. It says to read the passage and mark with a cross the word Jesus and all the words that refer to him e.g. him and me, and uh, we're going to use a red pen to do that. So here we go. Uh, but the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus... So if you've got a coloured pencil, just uh, use it and mark Jesus. If you don't have red or you've just got a pen, that's no problem at all. Just make sure you've marked Jesus with a cross. To the mountain which Jesus had designated, when they saw him... Okay, so mark the hymn That's there. referring to Jesus. They worshipped him, him, Jesus, but some were doubtful. Verse 18. And Jesus okay, mark that. came up and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me, so the me there is referring to Jesus, so put a cross over me, in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son. So the Son there is a reference to Jesus and the Holy Spirit, verse 20. Teaching them to observe all that I, that would be Jesus, commanded you, and lo, I, that's Jesus, am with you always, even to the end of the age. So, quite simple, just reading it through, picking out references to Jesus. Okay, so point number two under observe. Where was Jesus and who was he with? Well, if we look at verse 16, we see that he had told the 11 disciples to go to Galilee, to the mountain. Um, and verse 17 says, when they saw him. So it would appear that Jesus has gone to that mountain in Galilee. Yep. And he is with the 11 disciples. Okay, very good. And it's 11, not 12, because... Judas, who had betrayed Jesus, yeah. actually uh, committed uh, suicide. He hung himself, and, uh, and so that just left the 11 At this stage, disciples. they've got 11. 
All right, so point number three. Uh, we're going to read it again and underline all the references to the 11 disciples, including the pronouns such as they and them. So, uh, let's read it through and that's what we're going to do. So here we go, verse 16. But the 11 disciples... So, 11 disciples, and I'm just using a simple pencil. Yep. Proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated... When they, so that's the disciples, so underline that, saw him, they, the disciples, underline they, worshipped him, but some... Okay, I'm going to underline some as well, because that's yep, referring to the disciples. ...were doubtful. Verse 18, Jesus came up and spoke to them, okay. that's the disciples, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, okay, so, so not you there, and lo, I am with you, you always, even to the end of the age. Okay, excellent. So let's move on to point number four. How did they being the disciples, how did they respond to seeing Jesus? All right, now there are, is a little gap and you can write some notes as well. I'd encourage mm -hmm. you to do that. Um, so how did they respond? Well, in verse 17, we see that they saw him and when they saw him, they worshipped him. Yeah. And, and worship is, is a really um, important part of being a, a follower of Jesus, a disciple, isn't yeah, it? And very much so. there's a little bit of, I think, a little bit of confusion over what worship means. And um, I've been really helped over the years by um, looking at uh, the subject of worship. We've got a very good study on that. We can put those details in the link, but, but um, below. But here we see that they worshipped him. Yeah. And interestingly, they, it says that some of them were doubtful. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Some were doubtful. Well, if you think about it, it must have been incredible to see Jesus alive, having either seen and or heard that he died. Yeah, but they, they had you actually um, met with him before this. And if you look at the other accounts, they, they had actually met with him on other occasions. So they had seen that he had risen. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a really interesting word and um, we're going to look at it in the context of the next few verses so mm. let's see if we can unpack a little bit more about that but the point yeah. is they they saw him they worshipped the risen Jesus yeah okay so we're going to uh, point number five says so circle the word all including always literally all the days and we're going to list the four things that we learn about that so uh, choose a, a blue Yep. And uh, we're going to circle the words all. So, but the 11 disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All. All. Okay, so that's what we're going to mark, the word all there, all. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all, all. the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all, all that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you all always, ways, even to the end of the age. Mm. Okay, so we're asked here to list the four things we learn about having marked the word all, and you've got numbers one, two, three and four to make a simple list. So what's the first thing? Okay, so the first thing in verse 18, again, it's always very helpful to put the verse where you find the information. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus said that all authority had been given to him. So I would just put on my list, all authority has been given to Jesus. I'd just write that down. So all authority has been given to Jesus. Yeah. And, and we know where he has that authority. Yeah. Uh, and it is in heaven and on earth. So in other words, there is nowhere mm. that Jesus hasn't got all authority. He is supremely yeah. in control. And I think that's such an important truth. So yeah. make sure you've got that all authority has been given to, to Jesus. 
in heaven on earth. So that's number one. Okay, what about number two? Number two, we see it says, uh, Jesus says, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. So, we're learning that um, that's what disciples are to do. Well, it's, it's all the nations, isn't it? All the nations are to be made disciples. So, yeah. it, there's, there's not one person on this earth that isn't to be um, introduced to Jesus and to be made disciples. You know, yeah. that, that at least, you know, we're to share the, the news of Jesus with them. And interestingly here, it's, it's qualified, it's even more than that, isn't it? So all the nations are to be made disciples and mm. to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So yeah. there isn't a nation on earth or under heaven that Jesus hasn't got authority over and that disciples aren't to go and make other disciples yeah, of. And you get a sense of God's heart for people in that, don't mm. you? It's inclusive inclusive all the nations yeah absolutely yeah. okay so go therefore and make disciples of all the nations uh number three mm -hmm. what is the third thing so we we're now on all? verse 20 and it says all that jesus commanded the 11 so the 11 disciples um were to teach it says teaching them to observe all that i commanded you so mm. it's all that he commanded but the disciples were to teach these people that are being made disciples from all the nations, all the things that Jesus commanded them, they were to observe it. In other words, they were not just to know it, but they were to follow it, they were to do it. Yeah. So it's all that Jesus commanded. Yeah. Okay, so, and the fourth interesting, thing? and there'll be a um, challenge for us as we come onto this in a minute. The fourth thing it says at the end of verse 20 says, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So you want to write that down, that Jesus will be with his disciples always. Uh, and if you want to qualify that, it says even to the end of the age. So what does that mean? That forever. Forever. Okay, good. Forever. So we've got four things, though. So there is yeah. all authority yeah. that Jesus has. All the nations are included in this um, commissioning of making disciples. Yep. Um, it's all that Jesus has um, uh, commanded they're to be that they're to be taught, yep. they're to observe, and it's forever, for always, well, Jesus that is Jesus with is with us yep. or with them. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so over the page, number six, a disciple is a learner, a follower, someone who learns everything the teacher knows and becoming like him in character. Jesus commanded in verse 19 was for his disciples to make disciples. How are they to do it? <laughs> Look back at the four things you listed. All right, so this might seem like a little bit of repetition, but it's really helpful just to go back and think of it mm. again. So um, how are they to do it? Well, the first thing is I think that they're to remember that they're not going in their own authority. Disciples don't mm. make disciples in their own authority. They're going in the authority of Jesus. Yeah. Um, and if we can put it into a, um, a different kind of image, as it were, a policeman comes and maybe knocks on the door and says, it's um, in the name of the law that I am coming to arrest you. He is coming to do that with the authority of the law but here jesus is saying you're to go and make disciples with my authority there's no higher authority yeah. i'm the one that's sending you yeah. so ultimately we're to obey him he's the highest authority yeah and uh, so where where are disciples to be made according to the second point well uh, all the nations but i think that's interesting he says go ah you're to go. Mm. And we'll look at that a little bit more as we go on, mm -hmm. uh, what that word go actually means. Mm -hmm. But there's an action that takes place yeah. there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there is. Um, so we, there's a requirement of disciples to do something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is to go. Yeah. Um, and to make disciples of all the nations. So that's and, a worldwide uh, mission, isn't it? It's a worldwide mission. Um, but that whole expression of making disciples, making, uh, making a learner, making a follower of Jesus, mm -hmm. for me, that has uh, a connotation, you know, that's going to take time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're going to make a disciple, it takes time to make a disciple, mm -hmm. to introduce people to Jesus and then encourage them and teach them and 
Yeah. So, so it's not just a one-off thing, it's, it's walking with them? It's walking with them, because we're showing them, it's demonstrating who Jesus is, it's living in yes. a way that's going to bring glory to him, um, being worthy of being followed. So all these things. It's interesting, isn't it? Because at the beginning we talked about Jesus is talking with his close friends, mm. his disciples, and actually um, it, it's about becoming friends with and just sharing our lives as a follower of Jesus with other people so that they can see the impact that it has had on our lives. But um, yeah, so you said it's an active thing mm. and it's a worldwide thing. And it's a teaching thing. It's, it's not, it's, it's a responsibility to teach. It's not just about saying somebody else will do it. it. It's, they have to take the responsibility to teach and to answer questions and to demonstrate and to live. Yeah. So you can teach by what you say and also by what you do and the way yeah. you live. So yeah. there's an element of, of teaching there. And, and also, it, it, he talks about in verse 19, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now we could do a whole mm -hmm. separate teaching about baptism, and, uh, but really that's, the idea of baptism is a, it's a public demonstration of what is happening uh, in one's heart mm -hmm. regarding surrender to mm -hmm. one's life to Christ. And um, baptism in a church context would be, you know, you see that happening before Water you. Baptism. But what's happening physically is something, it's a demonstration of what's happening spiritually inside a person. So it's identification so, with, isn't it? That's and right. it's it's in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So um, it's the, it's our triune God. Yeah. Father, Son, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Very good. So there's a surrender to mm -hmm. in their name and a teaching of mm -hmm. Very to become good. a disciple. And I, and I think just the, the fact in verse 20 that Jesus said, lo, I'm with you always, I think that's so important. And um, Jesus is, has, we're doing this in the knowledge that Jesus is with us. And we're living in the, in the West, uh, here in the UK. And, you know, really, we have freedom to share about Jesus. But there are people who are living in, per, in countries where they're persecuted for their mm. faith. And actually... Um, to remember that Jesus is with them. That, that's huge because it could cost them their lives to, to make yeah. disciples. Yeah. So it's, it's wonderful to know that Jesus is always with us. He's never going to leave mm. us. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Okay, so number seven under the apply that says, how has this study challenged you? And what will you do in response? So have you been challenged by this? Yeah, I'm <laughs> challenged because it's a command. It's not a suggestion. Mm. It's, it's a command, not a request. And it's a ministry that Jesus has given me uh, it, it's in common with all other followers. This is something that Jesus has said, I want you to go and do. You're, I'm a follower of Jesus, I'm a disciple of Jesus because those 11 disciples took Jesus at his word and they went and made disciples. And so yeah. um, that's a really important thing to remember. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've just written a few things down here, the subject of worship, you know, it says they saw him, they worshipped him. Am I worshipping the Lord Jesus on an ongoing basis? How am I doing that? Uh, the fact that he has all authority. He is sovereign. Praise the Lord. He is sovereign. We can trust him. He is over all. Uh, also, that uh, as a disciple, he's given us a job to do. Mm. And that job is to go make disciples. And that's one of the things that we're seeking to do is, as a ministry here's precept, to help people to get into his word, to get to know the Lord, get to know his word, and then to be able to pass that on to others. And maybe you can take this and pass it on to somebody else as well. So we have a job to do as a disciple. Are we doing it? How am I doing it? Mm. Um, there's a challenge. It says, uh, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded. Well, do we know <laughs> yeah. all that Jesus has commanded? How well do we know the word? How well are we familiar with it to be able to go and um, encourage people to become a disciple, to become a learner. So that's a challenge as well. And uh, great encouragement, that, as you said before, that he's with us always. So we go in his authority, he's yeah. with us always, but we have a job to do. And uh, as a Christian, as you said right at the beginning, these are the final words of Jesus that are recorded for us in Matthew's Gospel. And you know, how seriously are we taking his command and commission to go and do this? Yeah, and I just want to return back to verse 17 where it talked about some of them were doubtful um, because in, in this context we see that Jesus is, is laying out that 
we know that he's risen, that he said to his disciples that he's going to go back to his father, he's going to leave them. And, and they are feeling, okay, we've been with this man, uh, this God man for three years, we're now going to be on our own. How, how are we going to do this without Jesus? Which is why I think these words are so important. He lays out very clearly that it's, you know, we're not alone. We're going in his authority, we know where we're to go, we know how we're to do it, and we know that Jesus is with us. So he was addressing their doubt, he was addressing their fears. And fear is a very real thing, isn't it? Uh, and again, there's, there's something else that I've, I've been really helped by, another study, um, Breaking Free from Fear. Again, we can put the, the link in, in uh, below this video, which is an excellent study addressing fear. And fear is something that we all suffer with. So that word doubt there means to be to, be, to waver, to hesitate, to be uncertain. And, and fear can come in and paralyze us. But actually, Jesus doesn't want us to be paralyzed. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be free just to share the good news about him. And um, so I commend that to you as well. Okay, so a number of points there about being challenged just to these few verses. Now, point number eight says the word go in verse 19 is in a verb form that means as you are going or having gone. How can we be more intentional about making disciples? Mm. So that's a useful little insight, isn't it? That, it that is. Looking at that verb. So actually the verb is, the command is to make disciples. That's where the actual, the verb, is, uh, the command is. So it's as you're going, therefore, make disciples. So that's the key thing. It's not just go, it's as you're going, mm. make disciples. And so how can we be more intentional about making disciples? Well, clearly it's a 24 seven ministry. It's, mm. it's not something that you just do maybe once in a lifetime. It's, it's an ongoing thing. As we are going, wherever we're going, we can pray for God to give us opportunities to witness to him yep. um, and um, just to share the good news of Jesus. Now, I am not an evangelist. That, that is not my gifting. But there are times when God gives me an opportunity just to share about what God has done in my life through Jesus. Yep. Um, and so I think one of the key things is we can pray for opportunities. Mm. And I can certainly be better about praying for opportunities to share. You know, we can be prepared. Um, you know, have we studied? Do we know the word of God? Do we know, as you said, do we know what Jesus has commanded? Do we know his words? Um, are we confident in handling the scriptures? And, uh, and that's why precept is so, I think, important because it, it's a, a practical method that, that equips us to get into the word of God because it's the word of God that changes lives. You yeah. know, we can be, um, we need to be committed, don't we, to doing this. Yeah. It's, it's not just a, a request, it's a command. Yeah. What do you I, think? I said the same, pray for and take the opportunities as they arise. Uh, we need to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit as we do that. And uh, we're to do it. And this can be costly. And there's a time commitment if we're serious about it. And uh, people can be difficult. <laughs> and they may not want to hear what you have to say. But um, I think um, there's some other ideas here. Uh, grab a cup of tea, coffee, and share uh, our discovery study with others. This isn't the only one we've got. We've got many others on our website. Go to our YouTube channel and uh, invite others to join you uh, and study along with them. And also you can come to our training events, uh, which are on our website, mm. and invite others to join you too. Uh, and we have found over the years that people have found those extremely helpful to equip them uh, to get to know the word better and uh, to be able to go. So, wrap it up, let's wrap it up. Have you ever thought about all the people who faithfully carried out Jesus' command to make disciples mm. so that we could be one, you could be one? His plan hasn't changed. It started with 11 men 2,000 years ago, and later, uh, uh, 2,000 years later, his command still remains. We're to go, and as we go, we're to teach people from every nation to obey Jesus' word with his authority, knowing that he's with us, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if you would like to know more on this subject, again, we'll put the details in the link, but you'll have it on your, um, your study sheet. One of our studies, Being a Disciple, Counting the Real Cost, is a really practical and helpful book. So we would commend yeah. that to you. But thank you for joining us. Take this study, go and share it with other people, and may the Lord bless you as you go and make disciples.